Hi everyone, I'm Diana Mwendo, the author of Big Hair Parade, and I'm joined by Abby Hobbs, who's the illustrator of a book we published last year. Ah, here's a hard back. <laughs> and we'll be doing a live reading, well, a recorded reading, and um, a Q&A with some questions that people always ask us about writing the book and, and the story. Big Hair Parade, written by Diana Mwendo and illustrated by Abby Hobbs. Here's a dedication to my mum, who's always taking out and replatting my hair, and for my cousin Hannah, um, to remind her that she can be anything. And, and my dedication, dedication to my mum, who was always super kind about my hair when I dyed it blue for <laughs> other colours, and also for my niece Astrid who has amazing curly hair. Oh, I would love to see the hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh. let's get started. Ooh. There we go. Aisha woke up early. Today, the big hair parade is coming to town. There will be hair artists and dancers, hairdressers and wig makers, and of course, the best, craziest hairstyles in the world. Aisha was getting all dressed up. She couldn't wait to go to the parade. Mama, please do my hair. I want to look nice because everyone from school will be there, she said, excitedly flapping her costume wings. Ow, said Aisha as the comb tugged at her cotton candy hair, painfully pulling out the knots. She had forgotten how sore combing her hair could be. I wish I had silky hair, Mama. Long locks of silky hair like Lulu. Hair that doesn't hurt when you brush it. At Lulu's house, Lulu's sister, Louisa, was curling her hair over and over again, rather unsuccessfully. Oh, I wish I had curly hair, soft curly coils of hair like Carla. Lulu whined, looking at her lonely curl. Meanwhile, Carla's dad was struggling to tie her unruly curly hair with her favourite red bow that matched her red dress. Humph! This would be much easier if I had flowing wavy hair, hair like Priya, Carla thought. Now Priya was almost ready, carefully placing her bindi whilst Auntie brushed and plaited her wavy hair into one long side braid. Auntie, why do I always have my hair plaited? It would be so cool if I could have my hair out in a massive afro like Aisha. It would be cool, but I'm not taking your plait out now I've just finished, laughed Auntie as she pinned pretty metal flowers into her plait. Back at Aisha's house, Mama's hands continued their rhythm on her hair. Divide, comb, pick and twist. Then Mama gently massaged some coconut oil on her scalp. It smelled wonderful. Aisha always liked this part of getting her hair done. I think we're finished now, said Mama. Aisha looked in the mirror at her coconut oiled hair, puffs with cornrows and braids and bright beads clicking at the tips, click, click, click. She was stunned. Oh, Mama, it looks so, she said, touching her soft bunny tail buns. Ding dong, the door interrupted. Cool! Aisha, your hair looks awesome. I've never seen it like that. I love your curly hair and the bow. Your plait is very pretty. Gosh, Lulu, your hair looks so silky. Mama, look, we all have such different hair, said Aisha. That's right. And each has its own special power. Do you know what they are, said Mama, smiling. Mine always shines in the sun, said Lulu. My hair, is curly, my hair is curly even when I just wake up, 
said Carla. My plait is so long and strong, I could use it like a rope, like Rapunzel, said Priya. My hair can change into lots of shapes, round puffs, long braids. I can even make it square or pointy, said Aisha. That's right. And as you can see, they all look beautiful. I think it's time for a group photo before we go, said Mama. Cheese, grinned the girls. Thank you, Mama, for doing my hair, said Aisha, running to hug her. I really love it, and it feels so soft. Okay, now off to the parade. And there's everybody having a great time celebrating their hair in all sorts of costumes. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. So now we'll do a QA. and a um, Abby and I have done so many school readings, haven't we, Abby? And the kids have been asking all sorts of amazing questions about the and book. And the teachers. And the <laughs> teachers, yes, about the book and what it's like. Um, and we'll share some of those with you and some of the answers we have. Exciting. Okay, my first question is for you, Diana. Yeah. Um, what was your vision for the book originally? Yes, so my vision for the book, um, I really wanted to share about what it's like getting Afro hair done. Um, it's definitely something when I was younger, uh, loads of people always used to ask and, you know, how do you get your hair done? How long does it take? What is involved? And um, when, you know, when I was a child, kids used to play with my hair all the time. And while it was funny, I also, it wasn't always fun. And I really wanted to just share a little bit about what it's like so that kids know. <laughs> and, and then we can approach that whole conversation from a place of a little bit of knowledge. Um, so that was kind of the overriding view. Um, hair, and people always ask why hair. Hair is such a big part um, of being black, especially being a black woman. Just how long it takes, how much maintenance there is, how much you can change it. Um, so that's, yeah, that's why I really wanted to focus the book on, on hair. And then ultimately, um, this story, I really wanted it to be a nice starting point for kids to start talking about race and racial differences and start having those conversations. Abby, sorry. No, I was just, that was a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> so many different visions. Yeah, and it was amazing to see it come to life. Um, Abby, similar to you, um, I know when I asked you to join in um, this project with me, I was so nervous. And and I told you about the story, you, you know, I remember you like lit up and you were like, yes. Um, what vision did you have or what were you imagining um, when I first told you about the story in terms of illustrating it? Well, it was amazing because you, you even had two books you'd written. Then, yeah, so I did. <laughs> Yeah, and I just, I absolutely like straight away went to this one because I also think it's super important that kids have that conversation early, you know, like the more information you have about people of all different races, the less like, what do I mean? The less scary it could become, you know? There's always like, kids are amazing and they really, uh, you know they they don't they're happy with everyone but the adults and later generations can sometimes imprint um, older views on those kids and if they're in a place where they're you know in a predominantly white school maybe all white school um, they may not have known any kids of different color so yeah. like yeah I just really wanted this book to be a book that could be in any kid's household and just familiarize them with all the different kind of people that make up the UK and the world. Yeah. Because I just think that's super important. So I was so excited to work on it because oh. I think it's really important too. And yeah. anything I can do to help that is, yeah. Is, is yeah, I think we just really got excited by 
what it could do. And it's amazing, you know, you look at it, it's like, yeah, it's a children's book, but exactly what you said and exactly how the, my vision was, it's planting that seed early to, to, mm-hmm. to, to talk about diversity and embrace and celebrate it. And I think what I love most about your illustrations, it's how colorful and how much it like brings them to life. I think that's one thing everybody always says about the book. It's just how brilliantly and beautifully colorful it is. And we just open up my favorite pages. Well, none of those illustrations would even exist without your story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> did you always did you always imagine it being this colorful? Like, did you have a super colorful vision in your head or did it just kind of come out as you started drawing it? I think, yeah, because because it was about the big hair parade and my head went instantly to like Notting Hill Carnival and all the colours that are there and all the different colours of like, you know, costumes people can wear and how it's a celebration of all kind of colours of everything, but also all colours of people. Yeah. So, yeah, I always wanted it to be really, really colourful and a very happy space oh. for kids to get lost in. Oh, uh, absolutely. I think it is. <laughs> But yeah, none of it would have existed without your story, Diana. So, yeah. All right. I think I need to ask you a question. Yeah, I think there's another question. How long does it take to write a book? How long does it take to write a book? That is a great question. So this took about three months to write. And even though it's what, less than 600 words. <laughs> um, it took about, yeah, it took three months to write because first of all, I found it really hard to shrink it to get to 600 words, you know, when it's write so many different things and more backstory and more forward story. And I thought, you know what, let's just focus on the main events, which is about hair. Um, and then I didn't do it by myself. Um, as you know, I like writing a book you get so much help from various editors and I had two editors who were kind enough to read it and suggest um, edits and ways to improve it so I wrote it and and rewrote it twice myself and then um, each editor after each editor read it I had another draft of it so it was about yeah five five times (laughs) um yeah before I finished it and even now I look at it and I think oh I could have added this and you know it's hard to know when to stop but at some point I had to just stop (laughs) well also I think it makes it harder when you have less words to tell a story because you've got to make every single word count absolutely Um, yeah it really really that's exactly how it felt but then I had to remind myself that I had the wonderful talents of an illustrator who could add to the words (laughs) said illustrator who could add to the words so that's one thing I definitely was learning while doing it is actually I don't have to describe everything because that's what the pictures can do it's very true a picture yeah. should not just be a picture of what's already happening you should be exactly it should be able to add, be able to add. yeah absolutely but yeah with you Abby, rewrote it five times like that's yeah that's so I know stuff. I know. I mean, I was going to say with you, Abby, you wrote it. Well, how many times did you redraw the book? Oh, true. Yes. Yeah. I, oh, my goodness. I'd have to look through all my many files, but I think everything, every page at least had three redraws and each character at least had about 10. I'd oh, say. my gosh. I remember. And you had, when we began, you had the kind of initial drawings, didn't you? And then... You, we kept adding more or you kept adding more to it yeah and more we it looks so funny now every now and again I send Diana a picture of what the characters look like right at the beginning because they look so alien now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it was like a sketch almost and then oh, do you remember the ones with the massive eyes massive eyes <laughs> yes I got some feedback that my eyes were massive not mine personally <laughs> the drawings <laughs> And all the kids looked like they'd eaten all of the blue M&Ms and um, yeah, and Skittles to boot. And Skittles. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I had to work on making them all look slightly less crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know when we started doing my favourite page, that big colourful page, um, or in fact, both pages of the parade, yeah, 
you suggested doing a collage and that's how that's how you started off before you actually drew it um can you tell us a bit more of that, about that process because I thought that was so cool to see yeah well I always like to draw from reference um because drawing faces and people is hard I haven't quite cracked it yet but I'm on my way I'm well on my way and it just takes practice it's no it's no like arty gift that is bestowed upon you like um drawing is just another form of communication and when you're a kid you learn to write and you learn to speak in front of people and you learn to draw and then at some point drawing falls off for the kids that say they're no good at it yeah. I mean we only had to look at our writing when we were like five years old you know like that was a mess yeah like it's just a case of practice and yeah. everyone has that ability within them and um and yeah, basically when I draw, I really like to draw from reference. So I created this huge collage of actual people that I found on Google Images and <laughs> um, just kind of cut them together into this queue waiting to get into the big hair parades. And I wanted people from all walks of life and different able-bodied people and some drag queens in there, why not? <laughs> absolutely it just to show all the colors as you said all the colors of 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 people and types of people of of the world you know if you go to a parade you see literally everyone there so it was amazing to capture that on two pages (laughs) yeah and it's about pride isn't it like taking part in a parade like that you're really proud of you and your heritage and everything and also yeah it's just a celebration so I just yeah. wanted many people looking as happy as possible on the way into the parade I love that I absolutely love that I think I'd love to have a frame of just that picture <laughs> that page <laughs> up in a in a picture frame would make me happy just seeing that oh, every so day. Good. all right Christmas <laughs> presents sorted yes yeah, sorted yes <laughs> love it. okay I have a question for you Diana um are any of the characters based on people you know? Oh, well, yes. So actually the idea for the whole set of characters was roughly based on my friendship group um, from uni in the sense that we are all from different places. Um, one of my friends is Spanish, one of my friends is Indian, there's myself. And I just thought and realised actually not many um picture books I've seen show a friendship group that is diverse and and but you know and kind of celebrates that um so I really wanted to do that because it was a reflection of my life and people always come you know when people see us as a group people do comment on that and I just thought that was yeah interesting I was like oh why is it why is it commentable that we're all friends yeah why is that weird why is that why is that weird why is that something to note Exactly. So that's yeah. one thing. Um, but then in terms of a character who directly then relates to me is Aisha, <laughs> obviously, mm-hmm. because it's um, based on my experience growing up. And actually something very funny that I've not told um, that, you know, Abby, but the costume, her wearing a dino T-shirt and the shorts was based on a memory <laughs> I have when I was about five or six and I was going to a party. And I really wanted to wear um, a dress, but my mum told me that I had to wear this dinosaur t-shirt and some shorts because I would look really cool. And I was so sad because I really wanted to wear that dress. But now (laughs) I look back at that photo and I go, yeah, I did look quite cool. But at the time, (laughs) I was so (laughs) grumpy about it. And I told my mom. You've reclaimed it now. (laughs) Yeah, I've reclaimed it now. I've made it a, you know, great memory. And I told my mom about that and she found that so funny. (laughs) Yeah, your mom must love that. Yeah. She remembered, she was like, you did look cool. And I was like, everybody had a dress but me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I love that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what about you? Well, Abby, actually, well, this is it. Yeah. So when we started drawing um the characters, and I was thinking of Aisha being me, and then thinking about the storylines for each of the other characters, Lulu then merged into Abby, and Abby merged into Lulu. You became one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, Lulu is my alter ego. Lulu is your alter ego. Hair like this all the time. <laughs> I know, and the hair—I absolutely just love that side pony. It's just 
I think it should be a look. <laughs> I think I think it should be. It doesn't yeah. Have <laughs> and why did Lulu kind of capture your attention or kind of yeah? How did you connect? Right, yeah, it was right from the beginning, and we were talking about it, and we spent a long time talking about our experiences as little girls with like the struggles with our hair because. Yeah. It was such a thing and that's why I dedicated to my mum as well because she always yeah. said that you always want someone else's hair you don't want your hair you want no. someone else's because you see all the bad things and everyone else sees the good things yeah and that's universal that's universal yeah. for all everyone it really and, um, is yeah and so I really immediately latched on to Lulu and I was like yes because I have naturally straight hair and um and like, I would be so devastated. I would try and curl it. I would try and, you know, with the straighteners and you pull it through and, yeah. and it just comes out and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, but then I look at it and like, it's so silky and smooth, but yeah. Exactly. Like it's all, the grass is always greener. Like your yeah. hair is amazing. I think. I would be so happy if I woke up one day with your hair. You see, I I'm you like, oh, I would love to be able to brush my hair like you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, yeah, so it just immediately spoke to me because I always wanted curly hair. Yeah. And um, and yeah, it like it seemed like that character was me. So yeah. I am obsessed with lime green because I am very cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love lime. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it just kind of went from there I mean she is I think Lulu is a lot cooler than me that's why she's my alter ego um but hey I mean we can all have cool alter egos we can all be. have cool alter egos absolutely I mean my goal is to have those wings that Aisha has because that yes. that would be my ultimate costume <laughs> to have <laughs> you um, know what those wings just a yeah. little extra those wings are based on the wings in the studio in the studio yes they are and I couldn't find them I really wanted to find them and put them behind here but I couldn't find them anywhere um I love those wings they just make me so happy and they're very carnival wings as well aren't they they're very yeah. celebratory carnival wings yeah um I have a question for you Abby um when you were illustrating I know you've illustrated a few books before but is this was this no? This is the second book you've illustrated fully, is it? Um, the is it? third, third, the book. third book you've illustrated fully. Amazing. Um, but what this is, one the, is the first one on Amazon? The first one available on Amazon. Ah, yes. Um, what is the best thing you found about illustrating, and also what have you learned doing it the third time? Ooh, great questions big questions question. uh, let me see well I let me start with what have I learned from doing it the third time um definitely keeping in close contact with your author Diana and I had meetings every Friday we'd have zoom meetings because this was set in the background of covid yes <laughs> We would chat to each other every single Friday and no matter what I'd done that week, even if I hated it myself, which I feel like is an affliction that many illustrators have, I would show it to Diana and Diana would go, that bit is great and that bit I maybe would change and this bit I really love. And it was a really open and friendly conversation where we both really respected each other, but we could be honest with each other about what we thought was working and didn't yeah, work. And absolutely. That was such like a great creative process to have it's because normally that happens within your own head and if it's just within your own head then you can go haywire and everyone can have giant pupils that are crazy I'm sure. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> always check in with yourself especially when you're so close to it and that's why I guess getting that feedback from the person you're working with and other people around you as well isn't it just always helps check in and I was the same with my writing as well you know especially um as you said we did it chatting to each other sometimes the words and the drawing and I'd go oh maybe I need to change that word a little bit or does that fit you know it's such a good process and I think yeah I, I love that we did it that um that frequently and that often because I think it just helped us both didn't it and it helped the, the book evolve to what it is now and it felt like a very collaborative project the whole time you know yeah. like we were we were in it every Friday 
like the week we'd work on things Friday we'd come together and we were both so invested in it that yeah. we could almost like any bits that I got stuck on you could see clearly sometimes and yeah. vice versa and it was yeah. just really really good for that <laughs> and the uh, answer to what's the best thing about it I think it's been reading to the schools yeah. we've done a few readings now we've actually got one later today yeah and uh yeah like looking at the little kids faces while you're reading and the little questions they give you <laughs> afterwards that's so astute. brilliant questions yeah like these questions these are literally some of the questions I've been asking and it's yeah it's been amazing yeah and like they're all so hopeful like and rightly so that they can write a book and illustrate a book and I just think it's so admirable and I really want to encourage them not to lose that yeah. as they grow older because I think a lot of us start trying to be sensible and <laughs> have a proper not job fun. it's not fun to be always sensible <laughs> no and that's exactly what we've done neither of us have have stuck with sensible and it's great so yeah. don't ever lose sight of that and it's so great seeing them all and oh, the pictures they draw for us afterwards I know oh, wow, I know it's yeah it's been really lovely I think that's the best thing I found about doing this is um just seeing a story that was like in my head um making myself bring it to life because it always feels scary because you're like oh what if people don't like it or what if people laugh or you know I've never written a book before this is my first book to picture book to write and um yeah but seeing it come to life and then sharing it with with everybody and with schools and seeing how much the kids are enjoying it and how much they like the colors of the book that Abby's drawn and the costumes and the stories and the hair and yeah that makes me feel like it was not not it was all worth it but it just makes you feel really good to see that you can inspire and positively impact um kids as yeah and kids love it and one of the drawings we received was a little girl and she'd drawn a picture of Aisha and I like know. <laughs> It was just so wonderful with our little cornrows and little beads. But with little beads, I know, and the big puffs. Oh, it was such a good drawing as well. Yeah. And like, you know, she was she was a, a white kid. Yes. Like, and she just, like, would you think that you'd have drawings of a little black kid yeah. on your wall being so excited about it? Like, that's yeah. what it's all about. Like, yeah. why wouldn't it, you? Why wouldn't you? Absolutely. It's just celebrating everyone. Um, yeah. And, and like celebrating the joy of diversity. And it was, yeah, that was so great to see when they send us those letters. Um, do you have any final questions for me before we wrap up? I do, I have one final question for you, Diana. Oh, final thank question. you, the final question. <laughs> um, what have you learnt after writing? Oh, what have I learnt? That's a great, great question. I think I've learned that it's important to take your ideas seriously because I easily could not have taken this idea seriously to write this book. Um, and I was really, I had to really push myself not only to um, write it because I asked Abby about this book about a month and a half after I'd already thought about it. So it wasn't an immediate thing for me, but then, and then I also had to really force myself to share it and try and share it with people because when you write or create something, it always feels like a part of yourself and it's scary to show that part of yourself. But I've, the main thing I've learned is it's so rewarding to do that, regardless of the risk. So if 10 people might see it, 100 people might see it and celebrate it. But even if just one person sees it and enjoys it and celebrates it and it makes an impact on their life, that is so worth it. So that's really the main thing I've learned, like take ideas seriously and bring them to life because and, and create them and share them because you never know who it's going to impact and, and what joy it will bring them. Yeah, there's a, it's a risk you take, like, it and is. it's such a worthwhile risk, but it does when you write a story mm. like you have, it feels like a part of you, it's part of your soul. Yeah, it and is literally a part of your soul, yeah. And showing that to other people and being worried about what they'll say about it. And then you show it to people and they're like, this is fantastic. We have to do this right away. Which yeah. I know was universally what you heard from many people that you showed it to. Yeah, but exactly. It's, yeah, it's always worth taking that leap. And it can only, obviously, you know, you'll have feedback and 
make it better and same with illustrations but yeah it's it's absolutely. not to be afraid to try yeah absolutely i think yeah the creativity is all about being brave um and we're all brave and we're all creative so any ideas that everyone has i think whether it's a book or a drawing or a piece of pottery or a painting you know absolutely do it um and yeah that's also what we're sharing with kids isn't it when they ask us about writing and 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 drawing as you were saying about being sensible you know yeah it's it's fun to play and play with those ideas um you'll never know what will happen thank you abby we have a reading in about 20 minutes um thanks everyone who's watched this hope you've enjoyed our mini interview session <laughs> um, yeah. talking about the book um if you have any questions just let us know let us know um on our instagram and we're happy to talk about it and answer any questions and the book is big hair parade thanks for listening <laughs> thank Bye. you